What's happening, all my crazy ant peeps out there? <laughs> We're so excited for this show, man. We got Emily Peachy coming on. So excited. <laughs> uh, am I rerun? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm yeah. rerun. Uh, what's happening? But this is what's happening now. What's happening uh, yeah, right like, now. Like the remake of it or whatever. You know. I just, now I'm really showing my age. <laughs> our listeners, the majority of our listeners are like, what the fuck is he talking yeah, about? Yeah, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> but yeah, guys, everybody knows who Emily Peachy is. Yes. Though. She's coming on the show today to talk about her new show, uh, Paradise Lost. Yep. Uh, be sure to check that out. Um, I'm not sure what platform it's on. Uh, Spectrum. Spectrum. Yep. Check it out on Spectrum because it's so badass, so badass. Uh, she's just an amazing person, and we love catching up with her. You guys know that she is an honorary crazy aunt, so yes, it's always indeed. fun to talk to her, man. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that is later on the show. Now, let's get a little crazy. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. 119. 119. <laughs> Holy shit. Almost at 120. It's yes. absolutely bonkers. I can't believe it. I mean, just to think about that, it was like, what, three months ago from our 100th episode? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, I mean, going way back, way back, we love our, I mean, we had him on last week, Jeremy Gordon. The first episode was like in the 40s or almost 50s, yeah. so like episode 40 I, I or mean, 50. I mean, well, like what, two years ago? Yeah. Over two years ago. That's crazy. I me. know. It's absolutely bonkers. Woo. I mean, it's aging us a little bit, but I mean, we age like fine wine, <laughs> That's guys. right, we which is like the only wine. way to, to age. Uh, you can't do you better know, than that. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. And you know your host with the most, myself, J-Lo Fantastic. Again, the one and only mouth. What's up? Yeah, buddy. Oh, we're so excited. So excited. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, some exciting Marvel news. Shang-Chi getting back in the saddle, getting yeah. ready to start back up. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. I don't even want to know. I don't, I don't even know. Okay. Like, yeah. And then we got a little bit more details if Michael Keaton signs on as Batman to what he will be doing and how many films he'll possibly be at, which would be fucking epic. Yes. I'm so excited about that one. Absolutely. And Beavis and. and Butthead are rumored to be returning. Yes. And are you guys ready? We're going to talk Jason Momoa. Yeah. Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> yeah. What? You heard that right. That's, Jason Momoa as Frosty the Snowman. That's a buff Frosty. Man. <laughs> I mean, that is a frosty. huge Frosty. <laughs> like, like I, woo. Oh, but it's so it's good. Be... So good. But, you know, before we start this thing, we got to plug our website, yes. crazyantmedia.com, where you can start shopping the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. It's true. You see the hats. You see the shirts. The official Crazy Ant Media right. logo right here and the hands down logo true. right there can you see that hands down the best merch yes uh, it's just true exactly just guys true. exactly so much stuff on there we're putting new designs at least every month so i mean be sure to head over there and start rocking the latest and greatest crazy ant media gear yes oh man but um you know you guys know we got to get the sad slash bad stuff out of uh the way in the front of industry news yeah. uh this is this is a legend right here guys uh, carl reiner yeah yep passed legend. away i i it's so i read that uh just just a little while ago that his last day was spent eating a hot dog with mustard <laughs> and sauerkraut yeah. and watching jeopardy and wheel of fortune with his good buddy mel brooks yeah like what a way to go out exactly like, right man. there man. i mean he lived his life to the fullest uh me being a young guy my most recognizable role of his is the whole Ocean series. Oh, yeah. Without doubt. Yeah. Without doubt. I mean, this guy is a comedy legend, though. You might have heard a little show called The Dick Van Dyke Show. Oh, yeah. He created it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sid Caesar's show of all shows. That's kind of where he got his start. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, created The Dick Van Dyke Show and uh, discovered Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, um, okay. You know, and then, of course... The famous father of Rob Reiner, who mm. everybody knows, famous film director, and was meathead on All in the Family. And yeah. just, this guy was a living legend. Like I said, best friends with Mel Brooks and so many people. And this is going to be a big loss. Yeah, man. Um, I he lived a full, long life, though, 90s, and died from natural causes. Yeah. So, you know, wasn't anything kind of, you know, horrific or just a long life and yeah. finally came to an end. So Yeah, I mean... 
Hollywood will definitely feel this loss. Another legend lost is just absolutely insane. We uh we've lost a few, quite a few this year. So we have the Oscars when they come up. That that's another thing. When the Oscars come back, they're gonna have a lot to report on on the memoriam. And, and do you cut that like at, yeah. at the end of twenty twenty, or say somebody dies in in January and February? Do you include those? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I mean, they already forget stuff. I mean, I mean <laughs> we're putting more on their plate. We're putting more on their plate. We love you, the Academy. I mean, we it's love you. true. But it's I mean, true. it would just be prepared. No, yeah, be prepared. <laughs> oh, man. But now, like I said at the top of the show, it's time to talk about Marvel. Shang-Chi, the legend of Ten Rings, is looking to restart filming later this month at Fox Studios in Sydney, Australia. I didn't yes. know it was being shot there. That's yep, epic. Yep, yep. They shoot a lot uh, there in England. I yeah. mean, and then, it, and then here, of course, in Georgia. Of course. <laughs> because that makes sense. Yeah. Sydney, Australia, England. Georgia. Yes. I mean, Atlanta, Georgia. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and the movie began filming back in February, and the pick is still expected to kick off next summer's box office at May 7th, uh, 2021. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. These next two years are going to be filled with of Marvel movies. It's so, true. I mean, it's true. Epicness. And this is a really fascinating character, the master of Kung Fu, you yeah. know, and they've already hinted at the 10 rings. You know, we, we, we saw that in the Iron Man movies. Um, but, you know, with the Mandarin, but will we now find the real Mandarin? Because yeah, remember, exactly. that one was a phony. In, Fake in, as fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and will this all kind of lead to that? So yeah. it's going to be really interesting, and, and I'm excited for it. Yeah. And I guess in a little other, Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki apparently also going to start to reshoot in August next month. Fantastic. In Atlanta, Georgia. Of course. So that's that's the rumor we're hoping because, that you know, Georgia's open and it looks like they're going to start production. So some good stuff. Good stuff. De- definitely great stuff. And we all know that Comic-Con at home, yes. everybody knows. And, I mean, everybody's trying to ramp up except Warner Media. They're doing their own thing. That's right. Uh, but <laughs> Disney announced that it'll tout – Three, count them, three new Disney projects coming to Disney Plus uh, streaming service. Yes. And uh, with virtual panels during next month Comic-Con Home event, an anthology docuseries, Marvel's 616. Now, this explores Marvel's legacy of stories, characters, creators. Each documentary in the series is going to be directed by different filmmakers. And I just love what they're doing over here at Disney with Disney Plus yeah. to show a lot of the behind the scenes stuff because I feel like behind the scenes stuff, especially on certain films or certain franchises, like you have to go searching for that. Oh shit. yeah, without the because it's all under mics, it's top secret. Exactly. Not, you know, so uh, I do. I, I agree with you. I love the documentaries. I love seeing the process and especially if you're a, a future creator or somebody that wants to get into the industry to see the whole behind the scenes. Exactly. How it all comes together is amazing. And um uh, that's all the great news. And now for the bad news, that's the only Marvel you'll you'll hear about <laughs> exactly. at, at Comic Con. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I, I I blame COVID, honestly. I blame COVID. <laughs> like, it delayed so much shit, so That's fuck right. you. <laughs> That's right. The next one that they're going to be talking about, though, we're super excited about, The Right Stuff. Yeah. That's that the the story the, of the early age of the astronauts and, yes. and, and launching. You saw the movie. It was a movie before, but now it's a series. Yeah. Uh, Patrick J. Adams stars in it. And our buddy, Danny Strong. Yeah, Danny buddy. Strong is going to be starring in it as well. So that's going to be a good one. Exactly. Remember, that's the one that switched to Nat Geo. It's yeah. a, and now it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. So super excited. They're going to be talking well, about Well, I mean, that. you know what that means. It just means we need to have Danny Strong back on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Absolutely. And Patrick J. And anybody else from the cast who wants all to come them. on. Yeah. All of them. Come back on. <laughs> um, they all will be there for the panel for yeah. uh, Comic-Con. So yeah. look for that. Definitely. Definitely. And an, also an animated Phineas and Ferb movie. Uh, this is a huge animated series on Disney Channel, yeah. uh, especially when I was growing up a little bit. Uh, that shows how young I am. Uh, Candace Against the Universe. So, Candace, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, so. Played by Ashley Tisdale, for yeah. anybody who doesn't know. Exactly. Um, so I'm guessing she's back for the movie, yeah. but rumor has it is there's going to be a sneak peek, maybe an exclusive trailer, some sort of uh, footage that they're going to show from that. Interesting. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, man. Yeah, a lot of good stuff coming to Comic-Con. I'm definitely excited for that, and uh, I I'm really excited to just see what the whole experience is like, yes. honestly. Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be one of the rare times everybody gets to go. Exactly. So tune in, watch it. And I mean, the panels might not be everything you thought they 
were going to be, but yeah. they're going to be better than nothing. Exactly. And it's going to, I think it's going to be really fun. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, they're doing other great things over at Disney. It's the true. True story of a uh, uh, Chevalier. Chevalier. Yes, uh, that's very good. De St. George's, uh, <laughs> known as the Black Mozart, is being greenlit by Searchlight F- Pictures. Drop the fox. Yes, uh, um, that's right. It's an original pitch from um, uh, Stephanie Robinson, an Emmy-nominated and WGA award-winning writer from FX's Atlanta. Yep. Everybody knows the show. Everybody yep. loves it. So I'm just excited to see what she does next with this feature-length project. Yeah, and uh, they got a pretty good director on hand also, Stephen Williams, who uh, Watchmen in Westworld. Yeah. So, I mean, it's in good hands. Uh, I mean, and this, if you don't know the story, it's about uh, this French guy who was born basically in the 1700s. He was a musical musical prodigy mm. and was the son of an African slave and French plantation owner. Yeah. And he, and like said, went on to become what was known as the Black Mozart. I mean, this guy was, like, extremely gifted, lived quite the extraordinary life, uh, champion fencer, had all kinds of love affairs, yeah. and, like, you know, had a falling out with Marie Antoinette. Oh, like, wow. I mean, the, it, it, it's an interesting story, so Seriously. it's going to be very cool to see them kind of pull that off. Hell, yeah. A very story-driven picture. I'm very excited for that uh, it, <laughs> That's That's nice. Yeah. That's a story-driven picture. Yeah. Th- this would be a picture. It would. And it's that's, yes. You like that? I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, if you want to know what we're talking about, watch our teaser trailers exactly, for The Raven's Vision. You exactly. will know. Oh, man. But now heading over to Warner Media. Still not a lot of news about Disney, man. I no. Mean, they're, they're, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I, I bet there's there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, well, there is one little thing happening today from Disney that, you know, you guys might be interested in. It's a, It's... I don't know. It's just a small little just thing. Just a small little thing. So, you know, I, I, what was it called? I think Hamilton. Hamilton. It, yeah, it debuts today on you know. <laughs> I mean, on Disney Plus. Exactly. So uh, you might want to watch that. Exactly. But, um, After you're done watching the show, be sure to go over <laughs> to Disney Plus and watch Hamilton. That's a, exactly. 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 But be sure to listen to the show first. Um, now heading over to the Bunny Warner Media. I'm talking about, and some more news came out about Michael Keaton's Batman as possible return. Yes. Um, I love when we talk about batman because i get to use my prop yes um but according to sources keaton is in negotiation for a 10 count them 10 picture deal yeah this is Damn. crazy to me because yeah. if you guys know michael keaton is almost 70 he's getting up there he, he's in his 60s okay and you guys know how they spread these movies out so a 10 year deal you're talking you know mid 70s yeah by the time it's all done, which I get we're going with old school Batman. I get we're going with the maybe, maybe Batman Beyond, yeah. uh, the Batman. But wow, yeah. that, that's Ten. some commitment. Uh, uh, okay, and here's how it's going to break down. Three major supporting roles, like where he's throughout the whole movie in a key role. Yeah. And then the other seven appearances will be like cameos, like Nick Fury made in, in the Marvel movies. Yeah. So... I can imagine it being a lot like what Ben Affleck did with uh, Batman in the Suicide Squad movie. Like one or two scenes, right. maybe like something, pass along some advice and then get the fuck out right. of here. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It but, is. Uh, the Flash film is supposed to be one where it's supposed to be like a huge appearance from right, Batman. Uh, right, because we, we know that one. Yeah. I mean, there, there, uh, nev- there could be multiple Batmans in that film exactly. from, what I'm, from what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's Flashpoint, so yeah. that all makes sense. That's yeah. fine. And then uh, Batgirl as well, right? Yeah, which I'm super excited about. Batgirl. And this is the one that has everybody excited about Yes. If indeed it's true, it will be epic. Batman Beyond would be the third one that you would have a substantial role in. I've been wanting this. This is what I've been preaching the past, like, forever. The question is, (laughs) who will play Terry? That's the real question. Who's going to play young Batman? Yeah. You know? So, mm, I don't know. I'm so excited. Woo! I'm so excited. This next one. Oh, oh man. my gosh, y'all. I don't this know next how to one. <laughs> like I, I just I, it's so funny. Frosty. Frosty. The snowman. When you think Frosty the Snowman, you think what? Jimmy Durante, you know, the cartoon. Yeah. Christmas. You do not think Jason Momoa. No. But Jason Momoa has apparently <laughs> been cast uh. as Frosty the Snowman in a live action slash CGI film coming yeah. up by Warner Brothers. Yeah. I call them crazy, but I'm fucking stoked about that. <laughs> it's gonna be so freaking <laughs> interesting, man. Like I don't I don't know I don't know what to expect. I don't know. Like, I just I just wanna hear Momoa say happy 
birthday. Yeah. Like when he wakes up, you know, he's a hilarious guy. You yeah, know? I, exactly. I know he takes on these like serious roles all the time, but he's a really funny dude. If you ever watch him in real life and kind of see this, so I think he's going to be an epic frosty. <laughs> I'm so I excited. just, you know, oh my gosh, it's going to be good. I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. But I mean, some stuff other than happy stuff is happening over at Warner Brothers slash yes. the CW. Everybody knows CW is where they're putting all of their dark shows, basically. Uh, but it has officially canceled this show that apparently wasn't too dark or too likable. Uh, Katie Keene, Caddy Keene, whichever you want to say. Um, after one season. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Lucy Hale, man. I know. Lucy she can't Hale catch is, a break. She can't. It's just she's a like, great actress, too. Yeah. The past couple years, though, it just seems like everything she's been in yeah. has either been canceled or a flop at the box office or just like, come on, people. I know. She's like really talented. She is really, I just, I feel bad for her. I do, too. Because, I mean, but uh, according to reports, I guess they're all still – they extended the contracts for the cast, yep. and they're going to try to shop this thing around. Yeah. It would make sense to me. I see why it wasn't kind of fitting on the CW, yeah, though, yeah. because it's a little bit more adult, and it has kind yeah. of a racy storyline yeah. to it, and it just kind of – if you were thinking Riverdale, it really it kind wasn't. of wasn't. <laughs> and so HBO Max kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. So maybe it pops up on HBO Max um, for all you Lucy Hale fans and, and for Katie Keene fans. Let's hope, right? But um, I don't know. But come on, guys. Somebody give Lucy something that sticks. Man, yeah, seriously. She, she deserves it. She does. She deserves it. She's really good, man. Really good. Uh, now, other things happening at Warner Brothers Television Group. Uh, writer and producer <laughs> Latoya Morgan, uh, you know, from The Walking Dead and Into the Badlands, has signed a major exclusive overall deal with Warner Brothers yes. Television Group. Under this pact, you know, Morgan will develop, write, produce, New television projects uh, via her newly launched Tinker Toy Productions. Love the name. I know. That's badass. Yeah. On all platforms that uh, falls under the Warner Media banner. Yeah. Uh, Broadcast premium and cable. So she's just going to be like writing for everything. Um, We should have that memorized by now. Under the pact, they will. (laughs) Because it's like the same for every pact that signs with anybody. But, you know. Um, Congrats to her, though. I mean, she's been a longtime successful writer and has had a lot of hits. And so only makes sense she would finally get a deal. It does. And uh, this is a good place to do it. Agreed. Agreed, man. And then, I mean, other things. Curb Your Enthusiasm, a huge popular hit show, just got renewed for... For the 11th season at HBO. This series is famously shot without a script and cast members are given a scene outlines to improvise the lines as they go. Which yeah. kind of sounds like a quarantine TV. Yep, but yep, I yep. mean they were doing it before so I kind of <laughs> probably inspired it. So, But I mean it's, it's crazy how long this show has been on. I mean it was on in 2000 and then aired 100 episodes to date and then it ended in 2011 yeah. and then brought back in 2017. Yeah. Wow. It, it's it's so like 20 years ago. Yeah. Debuted. I can't even believe that. Yeah. But it is extremely popular and yes. it's, it's based on Larry David's real life kind of a thing and, and you know for anybody who doesn't know you you youngins out there he created Seinfeld, co-created yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. And um so and the rumor long was is that George on Seinfeld Costanza was based on Larry and I guess he just kind of wanted to get that out there. I'm like, no, I'm just if, – if that's going to be – I'm going to do a show about myself right. and be myself. Like chill. So chill. <laughs> you know, so that's where Curb Your Enthusiasm came yeah. from. Um, but yeah. So – but this should be it though. Yeah. This yeah. should be it. I mean this show has earned like – 43 Emmy nominations throughout its run so far, including eight nominations for uh, Best Comedy Series. Well, and I got to tell you, one of my favorite things about it is Lauren Graham. Yeah. Whenever she's on there, she is the queen of talk. No, oh, yeah, As for we sure. know, dialogue. Just boom. So a show that has no script and is completely ad-libbed, you know she masterful. 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 So Just good. good stuff. Good oh, stuff. yeah, man. And the next one, when does Marcella Ali sleep? He, that is our question. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Because this next one, <laughs> HBO is developing an unruly six-part limited series about the legendary boxer Jack Johnson, who is going to be played by Ali. Yeah. Absolutely wild. How does this man 
do so freaking much. I, I don't know, man. And but this is apparently the one for him. Yeah. He has stated numerous times in the past that this would be his dream role to bring Jack Johnson to the big screen. Yeah. He's played him before on stage, but he's always wanted to do a movie about it, and so apparently he's going to get to yeah. do that. And and thanks to who? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Because it, it the man. Tom Hanks. The myth. Tom, the, the legend. legend. Tom Hanks. It's going through his <laughs> Playtone pictures. And so that's how it's going to get done. But yeah, Marcella is just. And I would not be shocked based on everything that we've seen if he gets Oscar nominated. I hope so. The guys, it just seems like everything he touches now is Emmy or Golden Globe yeah. or Oscar nominated performances. So, and I mean, Jack Johnson, boxer, I, you know this I guy's going to, it's like, going to get, I'm just, mark it. Mark this episode, this day, this time, Marcella Ali gets an Oscar nomination yes. for playing Jack Johnson in Unruly. Calling it out. Calling it out. <laughs> <laughs> But man, uh, some other exciting news happening over at HBO. They just like beat out all these other competitors for The Vanishing Half, a novel by Britt Bennett, a uh, currently adapted uh, New York Times bestseller. And yeah. apparently 17 bidders were after this thing. All the biggies, guys. All the biggies. The five majors and then a bunch of streamers and like just a bunch of minors all after minor studios, not minors. There weren't a bunch of kids out there bidding on it. Five year olds. Right? Yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> Let her have it. Um, <laughs> but HBO won. Um, and it's, uh, apparently paying in the seven figures for it. Um, I'm really, really interested about this one, though. I was unfamiliar with it. I wasn't yeah, sure same. what it was. So we looked it up. And it basically focuses on t- two sisters, the Vine sisters, who are identical twins. Yeah. And they grow up in like this small southern town black community and they want to get out and so they both escape from the community and then 10 years later or it passes and the one sister is back in the town she, that she tried to get away from and, right. and live in life the other is passing as a white woman oh. and yeah and living with a husband and a family and like nobody knows her like true identity mm. So that just sounds interesting to me. I yeah, mean, I want to know if like either she's passing as really, really light skin, or like maybe she's African American and albino. Like I'm, hmm, I'm, I don't know. I'm very intrigued. Yeah, or is she like that? Remember that one lady who I can't even remember her name. God bless that poor child. Where she pretended to be white. Oh, yeah. Remember that politician? Yeah. I forget where she was from, and she was literally putting on white makeup and trying to be white, yeah. and then had to admit that she like, was black. Please like, stop. What are you doing? Please stop. So I. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the premise of the, but it sounds interesting. It really does. It and really again, does. it goes back to what we always talk about. What I, I really do credit uh, Warner Media with, and especially HBO, taking chances. Yeah, they take chances on stories. They do. And this one seems to be one of those where it's either going to hit. Or it's going to miss, but HBO's going with it. And so. they're so smart, too. I mean, granted, a lot of these stories are about African Americans, and we need to step outside that a little bit, but this is very diverse. They're trying it to is. reach out than regular fucking 35 year old white man story. So proud of you, HBO and Warner Media. But yeah, I mean, like I said, we need more. I want to see more like Indian content, Pakistani yeah. content, things like that. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like those other races and those other, like, they get push to the side it's so. true you know everybody's talking about black culture and and diversity and yes there's a massive need for that Agreed. yes we need to talk Definitely. about it. but we also need to see asian people we need to see brown people we need to see uh, there's more culture out there there's more diversity out there we need to see it all agree all all right uh, yeah but kudos to your uh enthusiasm and uh grind uh <laughs> now <laughs> going over to cbs viacom Viacom CBS, whichever. Um, Paramount Pictures tapped former 20th Century Fox film executive Emma Watts to be president of Paramount yes. Motion Picture Group, uh, reporting to Paramount Pictures chairman and CEO Jim Galapagos. Uh, we watched a ra- roundtable Hollywood discussion with him. Seems yep. like a very stand-up guy, but I will never be able to pronounce your name. <laughs> um, I think it's Giannopoulos. Gian- Giannopoulos. That sounds sure. good. Sure. sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, her position, she'll be filling it uh, 
July 20th, effective uh, whenever. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited about this because uh, isn't she the one that came from Disney? Is she the one that... Oh, well, she actually, back in the day, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Jim Giannopoulos used to head Fox. Yeah. Um, you know, 20th Century Fox. Exactly. And With then, the dude from Sony. Yeah. Exactly. And then they both kind of split off, and he's at Paramount, and the other guy's at Sony. And so she stayed with Fox, but I guess this has been in the making a while. so Because okay. she never planned on staying after the Disney merger. Makes sense. And so and it makes sense to go home to somebody that you've worked with in the past. Yeah. So, but yeah. And, and who she's replacing. And uh, Wink Godfrey, he's just going to go back to producing movies and television, his first love. So. Sometimes you just want to go back to being a creator. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I don't suit creator, but still, I mean, less business. So, I mean, kudos to him, at least for acknowledging that. You wouldn't want someone to be, like, super down on themselves and, like, just hate the job they're working. So Yeah, no. And, I mean, it worked for really well for Amy Pascal, who used to run Sony and now, you know, step down and producing and doing. I mean, sometimes you just got to do it. Exactly. You got to do what you got to do, man. But this next one... CBS All Access. I'm super excited about it because, I mean, I'm a huge animation guy. Any type, uh, either anime, adult animation, cart- oh, little cartoons. I'm a subscriber to Boomerang, okay? But um, me not being much of a Star Trek fan, I just haven't given it a shot. Granted, I haven't given it a shot. But I'm excited for this one because it's an animated Star Trek series that's going to be premiering August 6th on CBS All Access. And what's really... First of all, it's going to be really cool because it's Rick and Morty creators that are doing it, okay? So that means it's going to be great animation. Already got me. But what makes this really unique is... It's a comedy. Yeah, exactly. It's a Star Trek series that's going to be a comedy. So that's all brand new. Um, you, I mean, way back they did a Star Trek animated series, but it was not a comedy. Yeah. It was basically just the TV show animated. Animated, yeah. And um, so this, I'm super curious about this. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Um, and you need to get on Picard, Discovery. I, I know. Like, I watched you know. the first two uh, Star Treks with uh, Chris Pine, but then I just didn't go past that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I will admit it's a great franchise. So I've heard my grandfather is a huge Trekkie, but he's also a Star Wars guy. So I, I gravitated towards the Star Wars, <laughs> not the Trekkies. But I will admit, I mean, it seems like an amazing franchise. And I mean, plus William Shatner. Who yeah, love and they're Shatner? all back home under one roof now. Yeah. It used to be that need, the TV and need. film. Films were separated, but now that CBS and Viacom are merged again, and they're all one, they're all back home. So makes sense. We keep seeing all these new. We should say real quick, it's going to get ten episodes the first season, yeah, and it'll be exclusively on CBS All Access. Makes sense. So makes yeah. sense. And I mean, other things happening. <laughs> <laughs> Beavis and Butthead are back! (laughs) They're heading to Comedy Central. Uh, Series creator Mike Judge and 3 Arts Entertainment have inked an extensive, expansive, amazing, crazy ant deal. (laughs) I (laughs) I wish. wish. Crazy ant deal, right? (laughs) Calls for a reimagined version of the characters. This is kind of interesting. Because, I mean, they want to set Beavis and Butthead in nowadays times. 2020. Yeah, and somehow have these versions of these characters connect with me... And, st- and my daughter. Yeah. So they wanted to be the Gen Xers who grew up with Beavis and Butthead or were huge. And then now all of the Gen Xers kids. How, I mean, Beavis and Butthead are Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. There are still, we, we had this to talk, you know, prior to doing the show. But guys, there are still long haired metal band like guys living in mom's basement, yeah. rocking out. Okay, Beavis and Butthead still, you don't have to reimagine them. Yeah. Beavis and Butthead are real, guys. <laughs> there, there are real Beavis and uh, Buttheads. No reimagining needed. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying. I, th- I, I, I mean, think it's going to be like Beavis and Butthead meet social media. Like, what's that going to be <laughs> oh like? <my> God. <laughs> like, no, they're not a <laughs> p- politically accurate, I feel like. So that's, that's, that's right. going to be interesting. But, uh, uh, they seem to believe in it because they gave the show two season a two season order. Yeah, and remember Daria and all the people that were on Beavis and Butthead. Apparently, they're all going to get new shows as yeah. well because this deal includes spinoffs. Yeah, so that's going to be epic. Exactly, exactly. And uh, Paramount has won the North American rights to the United States versus Billy Holly. Yeah, Holiday. Billy Holiday. Yeah, yeah. Lee Daniels directing, Lee, yes. producing, and co writing. Yes. Andre Day uh, is going to play Billie Holiday, and uh, Susie Laurie Parks 
uh, also co-wrote this script. All righty. So, I mean, Lee Daniels, man, come on. Everything this guy touches is Seriously. pretty much epic. So, and then Billie Holiday, one of the most gifted soul singers of, uh, you know, our generation for sure. Yeah. Um, this is this should be an interesting one. Yeah, exactly. Eight-figure commitment. <laughs> it must be worth something Paramount wanted to see. Exactly, exactly. And like we just talked about, the studio just tapped Emma Watts to be the motion picture group president. So, so I mean, it's a new thing, man. Yeah, it's her a first gig is a, is a, is a risk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an eight-figure risk, but uh, way to go. Exactly. That's the way you step in and take it and go, boom, let's do this. I agree. I agree. And now this uh, this is – why? Why do you keep trying? Why do you keep trying? I, I just don't know. I mean, let the classics be classics. You don't need to revamp them. But Nickelodeon is trying to reboot the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Again. big screen. Yeah. <laughs> for Point Grey Pictures, Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, and James Weaver producing. I mean, that's kind of cool. I love, I'm a huge Seth Rogen rogan fan but the last two movies released by paramount and michael bay's uh platinum dunes were in 2014 2016 and were live action and i mean they both of them only grossed together uh 730 million and you would think that's awesome but nowadays when one film is grossing over a billion yeah and you've got two "Eh." that didn't crack the billion dollar mark you're like "Eh." yeah this one's gonna be cgi yeah this one is going to be a CGI one, so not that. Yeah, I, I just they've tried this before with the CGI. Warner Brothers did it. Uh, didn't uh, Patrick Stewart was in it? Yeah. Speaking of Star Trek, right? Uh, yeah. Picard himself, but did not go over well. It did didn't. not did not do well. So I just the comic books were always better in my opinion. I liked the cartoon. I even maybe sort of kind of liked the first movie. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. But um, I I just think stop. Yeah. Just stop. I Go agree. back to the comic books if you want, but just stop. I know. I know. Fucking think of new ideas. Think of new ideas, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, now heading over to NBC Universal. Uh, yeah, and not new ideas. And not new ideas. But everybody knows that they are planning to uh, launch their streaming service, the Peacock, uh, nationwide on July 15th. Uh, and it's reached a licensing deal with uh, Viacom CBS, covering movies from Paramount and TV shows across the company. Under the deal, the films from Paramount will stream on Peacock and limited exclusivity windows throughout 20, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Yeah. And I mean, th- which is interesting because I feel like it's going to be a lot like uh, what Hulu and Amazon Prime have right now because they have a lot of the same movies. Right. But this is insane to me. The, the, the movies, the Godfather trilogy, Catch Me If You Can, Talented Mr. Ripley, American Beauty, Patriot Games, Last Holiday, Fatal Attraction, The Firm, Officer and a Gentleman. These are like some of Paramount's biggest hit yeah you have your own fucking streaming service why would you sign a deal to give them away to exactly. another streamer well that's what i'm saying they, like, uh, like four of these are on cbs all access yeah like so i don't all I, the Godfathers, I just so. I, I just don't understand that at all i don't understand and they're doing either. the same thing on the tv side some of the biggest tvs like ray donovan in the affair and undercover boss and everybody hates chris and like charmed and like what? I know. Keep them for yourselves, guys. What? What the fuck? There are, are you doing? up and coming creators out there That's that right. want to give you good content. That's Why right. are you trying to bargain with other studios about getting theirs? It doesn't make much sense, people. And, or doesn't. maybe you should have just kept Council of Dads. Yeah, bitches. Put that on Peacock. You're gonna get Charmed. I love Charm. Don't get me wrong. Don't get mad at me. Don't send hate mail. I love Charm. <laughs> But you're going to, like, go after Charmed and not Council of Dads? Fucking stupid. Like, what the fuck? I know. We're going to talk about that later. Hashtag save Council of Dads. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, get, 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 look at this. We have Sony news. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, only because it's bad news. It's a departure. You so know. Like they're getting the fuck up out of there. Yeah, you know. They out of there. <laughs> uh, Sony Pictures Television Studios co-president uh, Chris Parnell will be departing the studio later this month after 16 years Yes. At the freaking studio. Yep. And, I mean, he's heading over to Apple TV Plus uh, in a senior programming role. So, yeah. I mean, that's epic. And then his co-co-president, Jason Coldfeather, is just going to become the solo co-president. Yeah. Um, and will continue to report to Jeff Frost, who's Damn. the president of yeah. Sony Pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, that, that it's... It, it, it seems to be a, a ship struggling right now. It so does. it doesn't make, you know, <laughs> a, does. a lot of, like, you know... Yeah. 
surprise that somebody would be bolting. Yeah, when we when we watched that uh, Hollywood rep- roundtable conversation, Hollywood Reporter roundtable conversation, like I mentioned earlier, they um, they that dude was quite nervous talking about the whole Spider Man situation. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he was just like, no, 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 no. me and we're, Alan are like, we're gonna make that uh, work. We, and, uh, we, we, we wanted we, to make we, it work. We, we, we wanted we, to keep him there. Yeah. Uh, he uh, and speaking of though, because uh, man, I just read to the um, animators, the people behind Spider Man into the Spider Verse yeah. sequel. They said that they are starting to see some of the rough cut stuff, and they said that they are there's new techniques and new animation styles that weren't even in the first one that are just blowing them away. Oh, it said it's going to make the first film look like 2D animation. Holy like shit! Like they are just like uh, I cannot wait. Dude, I mean, like this was definitely. I mean, everybody knows Spider Man to the Spider Universe, like the co- the combinations of all these different types of animation. Yeah. And then plus with that shit, I'm so excited. That that was. Honestly, one of my favorite films of the year, if not of all time. I mean, so. seriously, it's in my list of all-time favorites by far. Just everything about that film was epic. And, yeah. and you know if you're an animated film and you get the Oscar over a Disney film. Right. That over was all, like uh, three uh, Disney uh, films. Yeah. I think it yeah. was like <laughs> – Normally, if, if Disney has an animated film out, it's guaranteed the Oscar for that year for animated films. But not that year. Nope. Sony snuck up, got it with Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse and well-deserved. I yeah. mean – Woo! The, this next one is I gotta say, whoever cast this, spot on. Bravo! Well, yes, Bravo. like this was brilliant. Zachary Levi, guys, <laughs> we're sw- now we're going to Lionsgate. Yeah, ah, one of the miners. They're still Lionsgate. there. They're, they're still, still there. They're still around. Zachary Levi, Shazam himself. Yes. Zachary Levi is gonna be Kurt Warner. Remember how we talked about it on the show a few weeks back that they were gonna make a movie about Kurt Warner's life? How he went from like bag boy to NFL MVP. Yeah. Well, Shazam, Zachary Levi is going to take that story. So good. And he's gonna, man, th- if you've seen side-by-side pictures of them, scary how much it's they look alike. Crazy. I mean, it's going to be good, though. I know. I'm so excited because this guy is so inspirational and just such an overall good guy. So, I mean, the story needs to be told, in my opinion. Yeah, and the fact that, that him and his wife, and we're talking about Kurt Warner, yeah. and his wife are actually producing and going to be on board and be there. as Epic. To, you know it's just going to be brilliant. Yeah. I mean, because this guy's not going to let him get it wrong. Yeah. And his story is one of the great you know, comeback stories of all time yeah, in the exactly. NFL. And, and like you said, inspirational and just on and off the yeah. field. I mean, be beating good. Pittsburgh, like at Roethlisberger and Troy <laughs> yeah. Palamalu's prime. Yes. Like, that's wild. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. Kurt Warner's how it happens. That's right. Like, that's, that's all the, be- all the beans. Yeah, the cans exactly. of beans or whatever. I was building that arm the whole time. He's you, stocking <laughs> shelves, man. He was ready. He was he ready. Man, he was. And I mean, uh, other news in Lionsgate, which is absolutely <laughs> surprising because we rarely talk talk about Lionsgate. No, it's Gate. true. Uh, but they have completed a licensing deal for Mad Men. Uh, yeah, everybody knows it's... Love a, Mad Men. It's so good. It's on uh, Netflix at the moment, but it will go to Amazon Prime, and it's just an epic, epic show, and I'm just absolutely surprised that it's heading over there. I know. Honest. Several of our guests, by the way, our past guests, have been on this show. Yeah. Spencer Garrett, Stephanie Drake, Danny Strong, so many so people many. that have come through the farm... Went through Mad Men. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing. That's how great a show it is, okay? But this is where it's kind of like got into that tricky HBO math. Because mm. this whole deal is like <laughs> <HBO> really – like <laughs> It's really tricky. Here's how it's going to work. It says it's going to start streaming on Amazon, mm. okay, and then go back to its original home, AMC, which is where it was. It was yeah. an AMC original series. So AM, Amazon's IMDb TV – is going to be the exclusive streaming platform for it starting in a couple of weeks, July 15th. Amazon Prime will carry all 92 episodes in Europe, Australia, and Latin America starting today, actually. And here's where it all starts to get tricky. Amazon IMDb will have Mad Men exclusively only from July 15th till October 1st. Then the entire seven seven season run, okay, is going to be available on all of AMC's platforms, including their uh, video on demand. So it's depending on what date it is, you're going to see it either on Amazon, Amazon Prime, or any of the AMC platforms. That's really weird. Yeah. That is just, really just weird. Just pick one. <laughs> exactly. Like, just, I mean, I feel like everybody has Amazon at this point. Yeah. Just, just put sure. it on Amazon. Well, in just, my opinion, like, 
this shouldn't have been too expensive to do, especially if it's bouncing all around like this. I really hope it Lionsgate like didn't screw the fuck out of Amazon for this, like, right? Because I mean, this this is ridiculous. This is a lot of confusing shit. You got to mark your calendars for this shit, it, right? I mean, I personally loved when it was just on Netflix. Yeah, and you could watch all seven seasons at once. Yeah. without having to bounce to what streamer I'm supposed to find it on. Okay, but it it is a brilliant show. It is. So if you have Amazon or you have AMC's a video on demand. Watch it when it becomes available, yeah. because, like I said, you're going to see a bunch of an amazing. John Hamm is just absolutely fucking brilliant yeah. on that show. John Slatterly, just there's so many people that are brilliant. Yeah. Watch it. John Hamm's honestly a highly underrated ra- actor that a lot of people just need to start paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah, Baby Driver. I mean that one. Uh, uh, bad times at the El Royale. That movie was fucking out there, but his performance was badass. Well, and remember that 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 spy film. It was kind of like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I forget what the name of it was, but with him and Gail Godot. Yeah, yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking that is fucking Batman. Batman and Wonder Woman, right there. Why didn't he anybody been cast? Batman. He would still be a brilliant, in my opinion. Now that he's a little bit older, a brilliant Kingdom Come Superman. Yeah, he, I put that little gray in the temples. Yeah. And, I mean, that guy is. Got it. He's bro. got the jawline. That's what you need for superheroes. He you need does. that jawline. I mean... He's got it, man. <laughs> so funny. So <sighs> funny. But now heading over to the big mega streamer. That's right. Uh, Netflix. Uh, they announced that Ozark has been renewed for its fourth and final, final. season. Yes. Uh, the fourth season will consist of fourteen episodes. The first season or the first three seasons only had like ten. So I mean, season four will be split in. Two parts. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, seven on uh, one seven half, each. seven yeah. on the other half. So that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, it kind of, I have a bone to pick with Netflix that they don't, like, uh, have shows stream for, like, longer than six seasons. Like, their longest show is literally six seasons. Yeah, which, even if they're popular. Yeah. Like, that's the thing I don't get. Even if they're popular and the fans want them and the numbers are huge, they just kind of, like, have this cutoff. Exactly. I, I wonder if that's a budgetary thing. We all know they are, like, they pay out massive yeah. billions and billions and billions of dollars to get all these projects. But we also know they're floating in massive debt because of that. So I just wonder if it's a budget thing. Like, maybe we have to cut it because the production is so expensive and we've yeah. got a balloon payment coming yeah. at the time where we're going to cancel this. Yeah. So that we have to, we you know, I, that's my only expectation nation because otherwise why would you cancel a popular show exactly like, I, I don't know and it's really weird it's really weird especially when like your shows are always trending on imdb pro like, exactly give them more than the four season chances like it's absolutely ridiculous i read an article the other day that the popular animated show Bo- bojack horseman got canceled in its sixth season they got time to wrap everything up, but it was also being told that that was their last season, which yeah. is which stupid. A brilliant series. Exactly. I, I just – I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But they, they do have a tendency to at least guarantee you two. Yeah. Very at rarely least. do you get canceled after one. Yeah. You know, I, I, which some though, like friends from college, I, I – like R.I.P. <sighs> And that, that was brilliant. You should have gave that one too. I'll be pissed anyway, if they cancel The Witcher. Yeah, I'd be yeah right. Yes, right. I and mean, I bet it, that one's expensive though. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Mindy Kaling. Everybody loves Mindy Kaling. Everybody. Right? Everybody. Well, her coming of age comedy series, Never Have I Ever. It's getting a second season. Oh boy. Yeah, because like we said, they they do give most at least shows. two. Yeah, and the first season just launched a couple months ago. Exactly. But it, it took off. It blew up. It's popular. So. You're getting a season two. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? We should, have, we should have that. Our top five next week will be Never Have I Ever. Oh. 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 Oh, shit. How much do you want to know about us? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Never Have I Ever. Oh, man. Number five. Oh, the, oh. God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I don't – wow. Look out. Okay. If that doesn't get you, I don't uh, know. Okay. I, what, it's going to either draw you in or scare and you off. Scare there's you no, away. there's no – Either no. or, like, I don't even know what the thumbnail to that shit would be. I like. don't even know. Woo! Woo! But they are also renewing uh, Michael Douglas and Alan Arkin's critically acclaimed comedy, The Kaminsky Method. Yes. For its third – and final season. <laughs> <laughs> Only three on that one, yeah. not six. What? Yeah. What's going on? Our buddy Riley B. Smith's a big fan of the show. Yeah. He talks about it all the time. Yeah, he does. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, I, 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 I know. I same know. Here. Now Riley's calling right now. Like, right, what the exactly. fuck? Exactly. What the 
Fuck. Or what the fudge? He's still young. Yeah, He's what the young. fudge? But, uh, man. <laughs> uh, he didn't curse, mom. He didn't. It's he okay. didn't. Um, but seriously, though, I hear this is a phenomenal show, yeah. and you guys see it at the Golden Globes and at the Emmys. It's nominated all the time, so yeah, I guess we should check yeah. Chuck Lore. It's a Chuck Lore show. Yeah, Big exactly. Bang Theory. You yeah. know, Two and a Half Men. That guy. Yeah, exactly. This next one honestly surprised me because I'm just astounded that they fucking already are planning for the next phase there's still another season before they get rid of these actors i'm talking about the crown guys right uh oscar nominated actress leslie manville is set to take over helena bottom carter's role of playing pinterest or princess (laughs) uh, not pinterest uh princess she's on pinterest i'm sure you can find her it's true it's true but yeah she's already in talks to uh take over the role of uh princess margaret on the crown and they've already recast uh elizabeth again like you said there's another whole year for olivia coleman but uh amelda staunton was announced for queen elizabeth so um, I, I, I just don't know. Uh, I, I think that we should have just stuck with <laughs> just my opinion, Claire Foley, and just aged her digitally. Claire Foley. I, uh, Claire Foley. Not Claire Foley. I know, Foley. Whatever. <laughs> oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> but yes, I agree. Because she Foy. was by far. Foy. I stopped watching Olivia Coleman because I was so attached to Claire Foy. Like, I, you know, I'm going to be honest. I know you finished I'm, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I finished it. And, but I'll tell you why. It didn't have anything to do with Olivia Coleman because I am a huge Claire Foy fan, even when I say her name wrong. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where Foley came I from. I know. I don't either. Just, you, I, I, don't, I know where it came know. from. I've been watching the, the Unfrozen, the making of Un, uh, Frozen 2, ah. you know, and all. And they were talking about Foley artists, and like it was just the recent thing I watched, there and so is. Foley was stuck yeah. in my head. But Claire Foy. Claire Foy. Anyway, bring it back. <laughs> Whoop. I kept watching it because the performance of young Charles. Mm. Was brilliant. Yeah, and I wish I had the, the the gentleman's name off the top of my head, the actor who plays him. But he his portrayal was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. of of Charles and what went on to make Charles the way we see Charles nowadays. Mm. How he was denied being allowed to be with Camilla, oh, wow. and then the arranged going into Diana, which we're going to see coming up. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the whole thing was just that's what kept my attention. It yeah. was not. Unfortunately, yeah. Olivia Coleman. I mean, honestly, I will probably jump back on that once the whole Princess Diana comes back on because that's that's what I was like watching it for to see when she's gonna come on. And I mean, she's epic, so I mean, of course. But yeah, yeah, I it's interesting, man. I mean, this show. I think after the actors are done playing their certain roles, they should just come on as producers. That I should. I feel like that should be allowed. Yeah, because they would help the other actors. Find this character. Find that certain character. And I feel like that would make sense. But. And look, I'm just going to say, especially for Matt Smith and Claire Foy. Because oh, yeah. look, I'm, n- I'm not knocking the other the other actors and actresses. They did a phenomenal job. The show is still a big hit. But the numbers aren't the same as they were the first they two weren't. seasons. They weren't. Uh, they're, they're just not. So, you know, everybody involved in those first two seasons, all of the actors and actresses, like, launched to that thing. The least they could have done is, you know, gotten producers on there. Yeah. I, I don't know. I agree. I agree, man. It's all an interesting situation. Vanessa Kirby as, as Margaret? I, I still I love Helena Bonacarda. I just don't think she she Vanessa Kirby was epic. Yeah, just sorry. I agree. I agree. But I mean, Netflix did land a huge snag this past week. I mean, they just closed a global deal for Aaron Sorkin's The Trail of the Chicago Seven. Uh, yes. The trial of yes. Chicago Seven. No, it's okay. See, neither one of us can talk today. You know, it's all right. It's fine. fine. It's fine. <laughs> Fifty-six million dollars. Damn. Yeah, their their relationship with Paramount continues because apparently this was going to be a Paramount film. Yeah. That was supposed to be released in the theaters, but we all know. COVID-19 fucked that up. Yeah. So um, so they have agreed to sell the rights to Netflix for $56 million. Nice. Seems like a good deal. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one. This film tells the story of uh, what happened uh, that was supposed to be a peaceful protest back at the 1968 Democratic National Convention. And then it got all nasty, turned violent, mm. clashed with the police and the National Guard. Um, and a lot of people were charged with conspiracy to incite a riot. And oh, they shit. all kind of like, if you're going to have a guy write this, Sorkin is your man yeah okay he's also making his second directorial effort with this hey. film okay um uh, you know so i'm excited about that because yeah. i think he's making that transition into um directing which is going to be really fun yeah um so this is a good sec- 
second one to do it. Look, Marty Scorsese, that's a storyteller right there for you. And that's right. He's also at Netflix, so it's fine. That's right. <laughs> and, and look, okay, if you're going to pick a cast, he already had Jessica Chastain for his first directorial yeah, bit, right? Yeah, exactly. First, but this cast is insane, okay? We've got, uh, let's see, Yaya, uh, Yaha, yeah, Yahaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Abdul Mateen the second, yeah. Eddie Rainman, Sasha Barra Cohen, Jeremy Strong, Jordan, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Alex Sharp, Mark Rylance, Keaton, Michael whoop, Keaton, whoop, whoop. Frank Langella, and John Carroll Lynch. What? Yeah, that's an amazing fucking cast. Exactly. To have for your second film as a director. Exactly. And if you're wondering uh, about the Yaya guy, that's the Get Down and yeah. um, Aquaman. He was Black Mantis or whatever. Yep. So I just can't say his name. I know. I can't either. It's all good. It's all good, but everybody knows I can't say names, so they're disappointed in you. I know. Nor- <laughs> normally, I nail these things, but I'm telling you, I've got frozen on the mind, and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. You've got frozen on the mind. <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant documentary behind the looks. It is badass. Series, I was honestly surprised. Is it uh, each episode like 40 minutes? Yeah, so, something like that. That's but awesome it, because that's longer than The Mandalorian. Yeah. I was surprised. And it takes it. There's, there's. Be prepared though. There is only six episodes. Yeah. But it takes you literally from the green light all the way to the world premiere. Yeah. And everything in between. And there was so much that goes on. My favorite thing is like this epic thing at the very end with no spoilers here. But everybody that was involved in the making. And you get to see just how many people are actually there are that yeah. makes a fucking animated movie it is insane yeah it's insane I, so it's so good so good this next one yeah, back to netflix back to netflix <laughs> yes <laughs> everybody knows we love disney it's hard not to talk about uh, it's them. true and uh, frozen yeah and frozen i mean into the unknown okay. and you find out that that almost didn't happen yeah Absolutely what? bonkers. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Back to Netflix. Uh, yeah. uh, Colin Kaepernick and Ava <laughs> DuVernay are teaming up for a Netflix scripted series about the NFL quarterback's high school years, which what? will be super interesting, I believe. He yep. was one of those that was either baseball or football. So, right, right. I mean, may, I, that would have been crazy. If he would have went the baseball route and, like, everybody there would have accepted him more than the NFL. Like, But I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know. We'll see. Um, but it's going to be a six-episode series that is currently titled uh, – Colin in black and white. And now I hope that means it will indeed be shot in black and white. That'd be badass. And not just the the whole scope of black versus white, black, white, yeah. the, the play on words. It should be both. Yeah. It should be the whole that and shot in black and white. Yeah. Just my opinion. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, it's going to target or it's going to talk about his early life as a black child growing up in a white adopted family because not a lot of people know he is adopted by a white family. That's true. Um, so, and also how it becomes like the great quarterback uh, while still defining his identity because remember guys he was uh behind somebody and then the dude went alex i forget his last name uh yeah alex but, smith went, uh, uh kc right yeah yeah well no it was uh 49ers when uh, he went down when alex went down and then colin came in and they went all the way to the super bowl right but and then alex left because they were like yeah. sticking with colin yeah, and yeah. then all alex the shit went, went to kc yeah. like yeah i mean this dude is a great athlete so but i'm super excited about this because we get some more of his backstory the series will also explore what led him to become a civil rights activist and the series was originally conceived in 2019 and completely written in may all right so and yeah. Kaffer, uh, kaepernick will serve as a narrator that's well, gonna be interesting. yeah yeah I, should. black and white with kaepernick uh kaepernick uh narrating yeah that that just sounds epic to me yeah that I sounds agree. like it's gonna be really good i'm super excited about that one so i mean Let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. And more towards Netflix for trying to fight for that diversity. I mean, kudos to them. I feel like they are doing the most in this aspect. They absolutely are. And they're putting their money where their mouth is by spending boatloads on on getting this type of programming and these type things. And you know there's a show out there, Reed and Ted, um, called Council of Dads. Exactly. That's a brilliant, diverse, and inclusive show with a brilliant cast. Uh, Maybe you might want to look that up and save it. Save Council of Dads. Hashtag save Council of Dads. Hell yeah. Hell Uh, yeah. Amazon. <laughs> yes, over to Amazon. <laughs> the Boys. Are yeah. you guys huge fans of The Boys? Oh my God, we love this show, dude. A super like new perspective of superheroes. Like. Yeah, uh, I mean it's absolutely brilliant from the masterful mind and brilliant mind of Eric Kripke, yep, yep. who, for all the Supernatural family know, creator of Supernatural. Yep. Well, we got some good news, guys. Apparently, he has confirmed he is in talks with. One and only Papa Winchester himself, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yes. to join the cast in season three. 
Yeah. What? What did you call him earlier? Like Jeffrey Dean Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's not him. No, that's not uh, him. Jeffrey yeah. Dean Morgan. Yeah, but this Rich, motherfucker, Rich, Richard Dean Anderson, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yes. There you go. And if you don't, if you haven't figured that out, just go with Jimmy Dean. It's great sausage. It's great sausage. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going right now. I swear I haven't been drinking. It's fine. I know. No, I know. I know. But I haven't been. I promise. I think it's just the excitement of Hamilton about to come on. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> and again, we're back at Disney Plus. I know. It's so hard <laughs> Gosh, to stay away from you Disney. guys. Marking us really good. Uh, yeah, we should be their own <laughs> spokesperson. Well, we should. <laughs> but I'm super excited about this because this came from social media, right? Like, yeah, fucking Jeff. D. Morgan was like, this show is so fucking epic. I need to be on. And then Eric was like, we can make that happen. Exactly. And I love the whole family dynamic. I mean, obviously, they've been friends since, yeah. you know, the Supernatural days, season one of the Supernatural days and everything. And I love the fa- – and we know Jeffrey Dean watches Supernatural still, makes comments to the boys and stuff. Yeah. So the relationship that the whole gang has is epic. So it only makes sense that Jeffrey was watching the boys. Yeah. You know, and of, of course, the guy plays Negan. Of exactly. course he likes the boys and some kicking ass and brawling and taking names. God, of course he wants to be on this show. Exactly. I mean, just don't give him a bad – Bat. Let's not confuse no, everybody. Like no. uh, just he can. Uh, oh my god, he can kick ass without the bat. Yeah, it's gonna I agree. be great. It's I agree. Great. And I mean, Amazon is also doing some really cool things. Uh, the Westworld creators, uh, Jonathan Nolan and uh, Lisa Joy, are developing a show at Amazon based on the game Fallout. That for whole franchise, uh, the Kilter fr- Films banner is producing the project, which has a series commitment uh, with a penalty attached, just oh. in case that doesn't go forward. We talked about that in the past, which would be. One reason why Council of Dads got canceled. Yeah. One of those penalty attached deals. Yeah. I'm sorry, back to... Back, back to, to, back to. Back to. Uh, <laughs> meaning it would go to directly to series if Amazon executives are on board with the scripts. Uh, the project will look at, to retain the game's harsh tone uh, with making it sure it has still sprinkled with moments of ironic humor and B-movie nuclear fantasies. Uh, so I'm super excited about this. Amazon is another one who is not afraid to take risk and is not afraid to have a darker tone to their stuff. No, true, and... And we talk about this all the time, you know, Chad Michael Collins, you know, past guest, you know, with Call of Duty and video games are huge, y'all. They are. Video games are massive. And when you turn these things into television series or miniseries or movies, they normally do pretty damn well. Exactly. So it only makes sense that a lot of these streamers are making those moves into those into those areas. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll get and <laughs> Westworld creators are the people to do it. Uh, if yeah. You're do I it. mean, for example, the other day we were talking about Council of Dads, but at the beginning of the conversation, he referenced them as COD. And I was like, Call of Duty? What the fuck are we talking about right now? I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, we need to save Cod. And he's like, what? Call of Duty? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, like, nope, not that or the fish. <laughs> Council know. of Dads. Council of Dads. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, anyway. Yes. Um, Priyanka Chopra. Yes, yes. Jonas. Jonas. Miss Jonas now. That's if right. you're nasty. Okay. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> She signed a two-year, multi-million dollar deal with Amazon. Yeah. And here we go again. Under the pact. Of course. She will develop both scripted and unscripted content for Prime Video. Of course. Um, Jonas is currently has three projects at Amazon. The first is Joe and Anthony Russo's upcoming global event series, The Citadel, with the Quantico star herself starring in that one. Epic. Um, the second... What do we got here? Is Amazon Studio Films Sheila? Oh. She's also going to star in that one. Epic. And then the third one we've talked about this on the show before is the whole uh, Indian pre-wedding tradition Sangjeet, which her and Nick Jonas are doing together. Yeah. So um, okay. Exactly. This is what we were just talking about, exploring different cultures and different races. So Amazon, you too. You too are doing great things. And again, this goes back to the maintaining relationships like we were talking about with Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Eric Kripke. This simply came out of... A personal, you know, lunch conversation with Jennifer Sulky, the head of Amazon now, and this whole kind of development deal went into into place here. It's we cannot stress enough the importance of making and maintaining relationships in this industry is key to everything, guys. It just it is agreed, agreed. And Apple, they made a huge, huge freaking snag this week. Uh, The they have acquired the world rights to Emancipation, closing the largest film festival acquisition in 
filmmaker's history. It's absolutely yeah. insane. The I, numbers are scary. A dude. Seventy-five million dollars is what the it started Sh- off at. Yeah. Shit went to a hundred and five million, and then of course back end deals were put into place. So the, 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 Apple is spending in excess of a hundred and twenty million dollars for this thing Oof. before a single thing is even put towards yeah. production or marketing or anything. That's just to get it. Yeah. That, I'm like, what? That's insane. But it's Anton Fuqua, okay, yep. directing, which is guaranteed almost to be a hit without yeah. with his name just alone. But then you add in Will Smith as the star. Hell yeah. Pretty safe bet they're going to make some money. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to make that much money because if you guys are familiar with anything and how the whole breakdown starts or whatever, they'd need to make nearly half a million dollars. Uh, I mean, uh, half a billion dollars, a billion. 500 million yeah. to break even. Yeah. So, uh, whew, I don't know. And I mean... I just hearing what this one's going to be about. This, this sounds like possible Oscar contender. Oh yeah, without doubt. So it's going to be super super interesting to see how many films from streaming will be in the Oscar contender race. Yeah, this so. is about you remember that picture? It's I guess one of like the very first pictures ever to be made public of a beaten slave yeah. back in the, in the in the slave days and this thing this is about this guy. Yeah. And um it, Will Smith is going to play him and it, it's this guy a runaway slave who makes his way through the treacherous Louisiana swamps north yeah. to try to escape and join the Union army. And I mean just just even envisioning that in my head with Fuqua directing and Smith as, as Peter, I, I, like you said, Oscar contender yeah. for sure. I It's going to be absolutely amazing, and I feel like it's going to be shot beautifully. Like Everybody knows New Orleans film incentives are getting back on the rise, so yep. hopefully they're shooting it there as well. So I, I'm super excited. So you want to talk? You want to just jump to the Oscars? <laughs> Let's just jump to the Oscars. Let's do it. They're already announcing films that are in contention. They're not the nominated films, but these are films that could be nominated. Possibly. Yeah. And they're already putting them out there. The first nine have already been put in. Remember we talked about it on the show a couple weeks ago. Now they're going to be in this like online screaming, screening thing yeah. for all the members to be able to watch. Well, they've already got nine in there. The first batch of Best Picture Film submissions yeah. are already in the screening room. And they're weird ones, man. This, this tells you how like just – Week the the selection is so far this year, okay? Because of the whole COVID thing, they've got the assistant, Crip Camp, The Five Bloods, which we we've heard of, um, the half of it, The King of Staten Island, which we've heard of, Lost Girls, Military Wives, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, and Trolls World Tour. That's three. That's three films that I know. Like- uh, exactly, exactly. And I mean, guys, out of the first nine films, only three have even gotten any kind of recognition out there. Yeah. So I don't know what this means about what it's going to be like to be voting and stuff, yeah. but man. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm. It's it's going to be crazy. The Oscars are definitely going to be playing a lot of catch-up this year, I feel like. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's absolutely bonkers. Yeah, definitely. Our Oscar party next year is going to be really fun. Oh, yeah. Because we just don't know. No. We just don't know. We're going to have to make it really entertaining. I have no idea. I have Mm. no idea. But anyway, guys, that was our industry news segment. We appreciate all of that crazy-ass news. It was absolutely bonkers. But now it is time (laughs) for Emily Peachy. Yes! One of our faves. We we just love Emily. I know. She's great coming on to talk about Paradise Lost and just what she's been doing in quarantine, how life's going, all the good shit. Yeah, and if you need some positive vibes... She's got it. Listen, man, yeah. because she is just full of energy and yeah. full of positivity, and she is going to guarantee bring a smile. Agreed. She, you, you, you're going to love this interview. Agreed. Agreed. Well, here she is. Emily Peachy, welcome back inside the Crazy Ant Farm. How are you today? Hello. Good. How are you guys? Uh, we're hanging in there, you know, enjoying the old quarantine. <laughs> Attempting to live <laughs> <Yeah>. the dream. <laughs> oh, yeah. Weird times, for sure. Definite, definite. But we are excited to have you back with us and uh, excited to talk about the show, the new show with Josh Hartnett. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Yes. And, of course, how everything is going. I mean, uh, you know, the industry right now and the big lockdown and production's kind of shut down and everything. So we, you know, we love to get some insight about how everybody's kind of dealing with it. Yeah, it's been definitely crazy. It has been crazy, yeah, <laughs> to say the down. least. <laughs> so well, yeah. let's jump right into it, though. Let, let's talk about the Spectrum Original Series, Paradise yes, Lost. Yes. So exciting. Josh Hartnett's kind of big return, right? 
I know. I know. I love Josh Hartnett. Like he was like my idol growing up. It was so cool to, you know, get to be in a show with him because I, I literally had like posters of him in my room. when I was oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, well, and I mean, the entire cast is phenomenal though. I mean, just like Nick Nolte and so many incredible yeah. people. Yeah, what a legend. Absolutely. And, 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 and Emily, right? I mean, <laughs> so that, uh, what, what a, a impressive like thing that must've been to be on set with these people, right? Oh my gosh. It was absolutely amazing. It was such a fun set to be on. We were in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which I had never been to. And it was really cool to get to experience life down there. And, um, and you know, the cast became close and the crew became close and it was, it was really fun. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I mean, I, I spent the majority of my life in Louisiana, New Orleans and Baton Rouge and the Lafayette area and everything. So I just absolutely yeah. adore the place. So I yeah, do too. It, it's crazy, right? Oh. Like, like uh, how it all is. I just think the culture and the people are amazing. The people are so phenomenal. So I had been to Louisiana a couple times, but to New Orleans and I'd never been to Baton Rouge and Baton Rouge was so much fun. I absolutely loved it. The people could not have been nicer. I, I loved it. It was such a great experience. Now, did you guys shoot at Celtic Studios? Is that where you were at in Baton Rouge? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a great facility. It really is. It was a great, um, a great lot. And they said that a lot of things had been filmed there. I think they said like, um, oh gosh, 21 Jump Street and one of like the Twilight movies, like a bunch had been filmed there, which was really cool. Yeah, really. And I think Battleship and Fantastic Four and yeah, just yeah. a bunch of, just a bunch of stuff. There, yeah, so. we were uh, fortunate enough to tour that studio once upon a time ago. So yeah, a lo- long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's huge. Like, it I'm is. Really surprised. Like when I pulled up the first day for my wardrobe fitting, I was like, this is a huge lot. Absolutely. So, cool. Yeah, and good people. I mean, I you know, you talk about the people there and everything. And when when they had all the flooding and all the incidents and problems there, you know, they opened up those sound stages to to house people that that had lost their their places. So uh, just you know, run by really good people, a really good community. <laughs> Definitely. It really is. Yes, it felt so homey almost instantly, which I loved. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, now I'm excited about the show because you know, and for anybody who's not familiar with it, let, let's talk about it a little bit. It's a, it's basically about a son who returns home after a long stretch away, right? And yeah. kind of uh, has some stuff he. Uh, had I, I don't know let, let, let's say a troubled past if you will maybe and yes. this stuff from the past kind of is coming back to haunt him right exactly yes all right and you play Liza Sampson correct I do so yes. let's talk about your character a little bit she's a teenager and she's from his past right yes so I I'm one of the parts of his past that um, nobody really knew about I went missing when I was a teenager and nobody really knew fit into his personal story and um as the series goes on it it becomes it like reveals like what happened to me and our relationship and um and how that played a part in his past and now future awesome awesome so pre- pretty i mean intricate i mean a year back and forth with josh hartnett was extensive yeah i mean it's pretty cool you know it's it's definitely definitely cool and i loved playing a teenager again i'm like almost 30 so like that was awesome <laughs> i was like i love being a teenager it's amazing it's, it's nice to be cast that young right i love that i loved it so what was the casting process like for that so um i was cast i think like maybe i guess a year ago about now and i was cast for one episode which turned into a more substantial role which was pretty cool um i wasn't expecting to be on you know multiple episodes i thought it was just kind of like a one scene one episode deal um but it turned into much more and um yeah it was kind of one of those things that i i wrote off only because the in the breakdown she was supposed to be a teenager and i was like you know i'm 28 years old and this girl's supposed to be you know 16 or whatever so i was like you know i I don't know if uh, if they would even like consider me but um i booked it and i could not be more thrilled because it was just such a phenomenal project and like the cast and the crew and like everybody the directors everybody was so wonderful to work with and it felt like you know a little a little family which was great and this was really my first experience with being on like multiple episodes of a tv series and it was a really different experience than being on like a movie because like you do form this this relationship with everybody and there's like a a rapport between the cast and the crew and it it runs like a well-oiled machine and i loved it absolutely but i love that uh i love how like normally someone comes in as a guest star and just kind of gets to 
kind of experienced like the little family dynamic, but you were literally there like m- the majority of the season. So you were a part of that family. So that's just epic to hear. And I'm happy for you because you definitely deserve that. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's so sweet. And like I said, like the people too, like in the South are so nice. And like it felt it felt so warm and welcoming from day one. That's good. Yeah, they, they they are they are a unique bunch of people, no doubt about it. Down in South Louisiana, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. They were great. Oh, they were so great, so uh, sweet. Uh, did Did you come across any Cajun? Did right, you learn that's to what talk I was going to ask. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we did have some. It was pretty pretty good. Um, I mean, I love that type of food. And we went to Louisiana. Or we went to New Orleans for the weekend. There you go. Like the best food ever. Um, you know, probably couldn't do it for more than a weekend, but like, it was amazing. Oh, Just definitely. fried everything. Yes. So good. So <laughs> it, good. It is good to so hear good. that, that, that you had such a great experience on the show though. And, and that, that, you know, it was received so well. We hear nothing but great stuff about it. I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't find a bad review on it. Um, That's I think amazing. everybody enjoyed it and, and uh, you know, I'm really, when we get out of this crazy thing called quarantine and all this kind of stuff, right. I'm, I'm hoping we hear some good news and it gets picked up because I want to know. I want to. I want to know where the story yeah, what, keeps going. Yeah. What happens next? I want to know. Yes. Exactly. It'll be interesting to see like how the industry like resumes. I was cast on a show right before this thing started that I'm actually supposed to be filming right now, and like it's just such a weird like waiting game. Like, what's happening? Is it going? Is it? You know, we don't know. So it's just crazy. Right. And you know, and what Newsom just recently announced, you know, another three months. So yeah, at the earliest, I feel like August before anything would start again. And I don't know. You know, everything is so weird right now. I have no right. idea what's going on with anything. It's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I, I mean, just the way production has completely shut down is just uh, it, it's so mind boggling to me. But it seems like for the time being that with uh, kind of like Atlanta and Georgia reopening and some in North Carolina. Carolina, like you said, some in Louisiana, maybe they're definitely going to shift to the other entertainment meccas of the of the United States. So hopefully that gains some traction a little bit. Maybe it like, uh, I don't know, find a new plan. But I'm right. it's scary for L.A., like waiting until almost the new year to reopen. It is crazy. Yeah. So. That is just wild. Like, who could have seen this coming? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's definitely had a, an effect on the entertainment industry by far. And it's just, whew, yeah, it's a tough one. So, how are you getting through? What I mean, how are you spending your time? How how are you taking care of yourself? And how how are you doing things? You know, um, I spent the first couple weeks, you know, baking a lot, doing uh-huh. puzzles, like doing things that pretty much everybody else is doing. And then, like last week, I was just like at my wit's end. I was like, I have to get out of this apartment. I right. can't do it anymore. <laughs> so. Um, one of my friends actually has a plane, so we went flying this weekend, and then we drove up to Big Sur, and um, that was such a, a good getaway. It was like the perfect little quarantine getaway because nobody was there, and there you, go. Um, you know, just a change of scenery, which I very desperately needed. Absolutely, <laughs> you got to get out and about. I mean, it just yeah, you cannot stay isolated forever. It's just insane. Yeah, it's bad for your mental health. It is. So are you creating any content? I mean, that's always fun to watch too, like how, how people are, are using the quarantine to, to be creative, which is really interesting. I love that. Yes. I mean, I, I love even watching people's TikToks. Like people put so much effort into them and they're so good. Like some of them are amazing. Right. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> well, and cooking shows and just like, I mean, all these people who are like, no, I'm stuck at my house. I'm going to be in my kitchen. I'm just going to cook for everybody. It's amazing. And I watch it. I'm yeah. right there watching it. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> right. I mean, I've been writing a couple couple things there you go been, you know eating a lot I've, I've watched i think every movie ever <laughs> ever created <laughs> which is great you know i mean I've, I've been going through the classics which has been fun and all these movies that i hadn't seen that people are like oh they're so great and you know it's been fun that's been good yeah, definitely i mean the streamers are having a blast right they're seeing just huge increases in in, in watchers so yes my tv is only 24 really <laughs> 7 it just doesn't turn off yeah, it's it's absolutely insane. But it is amazing, though, about how these creators are still creating content. Like, we just interviewed uh, Spencer Garrett and uh, Alicia oh, Wainwright right. from uh, the quarantine show that's on IGTV. And that's just been blowing up. Basically, that it's so cool. yeah, like a Quibi show, but like on Instagram. I love it. Yeah, to be able to be able to do these things on Zoom is just, you know, incredible. So, oh, I know. Even like watching like SNL and stuff, like it's amazing that they're able to 
still do it. It's, it's incredible. It is. I mean, it, it's, uh, but it, I think it just lends to the creativity and the ingenuity of, of people in our business. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like, listen, this really sucks, but we can find a way to still get out there and still have fun and still do things to entertain people. And so God bless I, the people doing it. Seriously. Yes. And creative ways to do it. You know, like I would never have thought of that. And that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, and yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. Cause I, I think a lot of people, we were talking about this the, the other day with Spencer also, I think a lot of people are just under this impression that, you know, if you're in the industry, if you're an actor or an actress or a writer or something, you're, you're somehow massively wealthy and you're sitting at your big Bel Air mansion and, and you're just getting through this, this ride easily. And that's just not the case with so many people in the industry. So no, no, being like a working actor is not, you know, you're not at that level yet. You're just not. Exactly. And so it, it's nice to see people out there trying to do stuff to help people out. Yeah. I love that. That's so great. That's always fun to talk to you. You always have, she has always the most upbeat, positive I know, I attitude. And, and oh my just gosh, like, that's so sweet. <laughs> it really <laughs> is, though. Yeah, no, I mean, oh, that, there's no other way to get through it, right? You got to remain upbeat and positive and have and have a good attitude. And I mean, that that's the way to live life, I think. Yes, you guys too. You guys are always in the best mood. Yeah, we, <laughs> we try. We, we try. try. It, it, it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, I think we're generally happy and it's a lot of wine. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> yeah, Stay. don't talk about the wine. <laughs> It's fine. It's quarantine. That's right. That's right. There's <laughs> That's a, so funny. Spencer had a great line in his show. He's like, we're all alcoholics right now. It's like, no, it's good. We're all kicked back with alcohol and watching TV. It's great. Sorry. Exactly. I mean, my best friend called me yesterday and she was like, you know, drunk in the middle of the day. She's like, is this bad? I was like, pre-quarantine, yes. But now? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's acceptable exactly. now. Exactly. It's fine. Exactly. 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 Everybody's kicked back in their pajamas with alcohol and like in the middle of the day. It's awesome. <laughs> Totally fine. <laughs> uh, it's so funny, so funny. But ourselves, we're just trying to learn some new stuff as well. I mean, being creatives, trying to learn some new like Adobe products. Like, try. We have an animated series that we're trying to bring to life. And man, like maybe we get you to be a voice actress on that. That would That'd be, be awesome. amazing. Oh my gosh, I would love that. That would be so cool. I would always, I have like always wanted to do voiceover. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, oh yeah, I can already see that. Exactly. Like, I, I can already see that. That would be epic. That would oh my be so much fun. goodness! Yeah, I mean, yeah, I th- I think we're just kind of like everybody else, you know. We've been doing all kind of writing and sketching and like you know just whatever at, to try to keep busy and and stay at it. So yeah, and you know it's been great. I mean, there definitely have been some upsides to this whole thing. I've gotten a lot of stuff done that I normally wouldn't. Yeah. So I mean, there definitely have been some positive sides, and you see see like the whole community like coming together and like you said before, like helping each other, and I love to see that. And they're really, I mean, it really does show everyone's true colors and there have been some really just amazing people coming through right now and it's wonderful definitely definitely well listen we could not be more happy that you came on to talk to us honestly um we want everybody to go watch paradise lost because i just think it was a brilliant show uh your performance is absolutely phenomenal as always and i just uh, yeah i mean we could not be more happy for you so we're going to direct everybody to where to find it and where to watch it and uh we're hoping that we can we can see a whole lot more of you after this whole thing is over and and you can get back in front of a camera somewhere and do some stuff Oh, me too. Yes. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, thanks for joining us and thanks for, you know, always talking to us. And as always, open invite whenever you want to come on and talk or promote anything or just, you know, you're always welcome. Oh, exactly. You guys are the best. I love coming on. Of course. You are an honorary crazy aunt. I'm it's just true. saying. <laughs> I love that. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, take care. Continue to stay safe and everything. And we will definitely be in touch with you soon. Maybe we will reach out and get her to do a little voiceover that'd be epic cartoon. that'd be epic hey i'd love it awesome <laughs> awesome well let's take care okay and we'll be in touch soon all right talk to you guys later all right bye-bye bye, bye. So epic. Just always like one of the most positive people we know. Yeah, without doubt. she Her attitude is always so refreshing. Yeah. I mean like, yeah, I, I just – oh, yeah, I got you know claustrophobic. So I got out of the house, went to Big Sur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the way to do it. It's like I can either get down or I can go find a way to be happy. And you know, she's always finding a way to be happy. Exactly, so. exactly. Thank you again, Emily Peachy, for coming on the show.
Alrighty, guys. Hope everybody enjoyed that blast from the positivity lane. Uh, yes. So good, so good. But now it's time for the top five segment, time for the top five challenge. Man, oh man, we're talking a whole bunch about different shows, like things we dislike, what we haven't seen, things like that. So now this week, this top five is top five TV shows that should not have been canceled. It only made sense for this to be the one this week. <laughs> I know, right? It only made sense. Exactly, exactly. I mean, so many good ones out there. It's honestly insane how many shows have been canceled and not been picked back up either on a streamer now since with fucking, I mean, Arrested in Development is a good example example of one that did right from network to a streamer and i'm right. happy netflix was able to do that for that show but there needs to be more there needs I'm to be saying. more and just we saying. have a suggestion yes. we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to it we'll get to it <laughs> but uh my number five this week is freaks and geeks mm, freaks so and geeks. many freaking epic actors coming from this show i mean you got linda cardini card say it cardellini there you go yes uh, <laughs> james franco seth rogan busy phillips jason siegel that's just to name some and like kind of the main cast there's so many ones that came were up and comers coming onto the show and it only got one season yeah one which fucking is insane season. to me yeah. because it was a brilliant show it was I, I mean ahead of its time i think i think so I, too. I think it was a victim of just being a, a too ahead of its time yeah and and i mean but yeah like you said it spawned a shit ton of careers and like a lot of famous people came out of there absolutely wild. so i mean whew. same thing with my number five no ordinary family oh, yeah. this was a little superhero gem from mr greg berlanti master behind behind the cw arrowverse and all of the brilliance that there is he had it before that guys it was mm -hmm. on abc no ordinary family with julie benz and and chicklets yes yes, yes. <laughs> and and like dude this was basically like the mom could run super fast you know michael chicklets's character the dad was super strong and um and then the kids had had powers the son could like figure out formulas and stuff in his mind and everything the daughter was like a plant-based type power thing or whatever and um it was just a brilliant show sounds a like very... live action incredibles yes <laughs> uh, it was a mix of incredibles or fantastic four yeah. or or whatever um but it was brilliant and they had the whole corporate espionage bad guy that was of kind of behind all yeah. of the the, the of maybe behind the powers or whatever and like all this and one of the little assistants to the main person julie benz was autumn research character oh shit yeah oh go <laughs> figure who was addicted to superheroes and her favorite character was like kitty pride she used to carry around the dragon lockheed and stuff which as a comic book geek i was loving the show yeah only got one season Ugh. like you said but i agree with you i think it was just a victim of too soon. Yeah. Like, had that hit two years later on the CW, it would probably still be on. Yeah. So, there exactly. you go. Exactly. It sucks, man. So many... Ugh, like so, just said. for anybody who doesn't think it's possible, Berlanti did have a miss. Yeah. Exactly. It shouldn't have been, but it was. It was. It was. And also, you guys know Autumn Racer came on the show twice, so be sure to go back and listen twice. to those interviews slash top five segments. And it's not the only comic book show she was involved with. No. Yeah. Listen to the interview. You'll find out. You'll find out. <laughs> You'll find out. Uh, my number four has recently been picked up by Netflix, and you can watch it there. Uh, it's two seasons that all in all in a uh, capacity uh imposters <laughs> imposters i don't know what i was trying to say brilliant about. show it's so good all about conning a con man basically i mean you got imbar lavi who is on lucifer now. yes eden on it, lucifer yeah guys. you got rob heaps who is on uh good girls now yep uh you got parker young and marlene rodden so i mean so many great actors spawn from this one as well. So I, it just sucks, man. It sucks. Everybody kind of wants to be a bad guy a little bit. I mean, a little bit. Everybody wants to be bad every now and then. So it's and true. This, this is the show that lets you be bad with them. So it's true. It sucks. It sucks. And uh, my next one only got one season, yeah. and I was really disappointed with this. Uh, Jack and Bobby. Mm. Talk about another huge cast that had like uh, Logan Lerman, Christine Lottie. Uh, John Slatterly, just, I mean, a ton of people that basically all went on to uh, Mad Men. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, like, almost all of the entire cast showed up on Mad Men exactly. at some point. But it was just this brilliant show about an older brother and a younger brother. And the whole premise, obviously, was one went on to become president of the United States. And the whole thing is being told in flashback scenes while it's being narrated from the older administration of the brother that became president yeah. and the whole thing is guided like you think jack is going to be president 
but it's Bobby that ended up becoming president. Yeah. The first lady gets really confusing here is Jack's girlfriend, but apparently becomes Bobby's wife down the line. And there's a bit of an age difference there, but Matt Long and Logan Lerman as the, as the, as Jack and Bobby just absolutely brilliant, brilliant show. Um, I hate that it got one season. Yeah. So, and somebody bring that one back, please Seriously. put that on a streamer somewhere. Cause I would watch it again. I would binge watch the shit out of it for one season. Yeah. I agree, I mean, man. I agree. And uh, my number three, I mean, probably for different reasons that it got canceled. But The Punisher. Netflix is The Punisher. Yes. It, I'm so worried to see what they're going to do next with this character because Netflix got him right. Like, they had a perfect graphic, like, action-packed, violent that's who this guy is. He is a violent motherfucker. <laughs> yes. So and like to take that all away to make it a PG version or a PG thirteen version, kind of like Deadpool. To make that a PG thirteen version is kind of injustice to the character. Yeah. So I'm kind of worried what happens next with them. And Frank Castle was absolutely perfect. Or I mean, freaking John Berthal was absolutely perfect as, as Frank, Frank Castle. Castle. <laughs> yeah. So I agree. I with. Everything you just said. The only hope, the only bit of glimmering light in that whole thing is that Feige is apparently also a huge fan of Bernthal's interpretation of yeah. The Punisher. Um, but everybody in the Netflix Marvel universe was right. I agree. D- D- Daredevil, Elektra, Jessica Jones, like all of the characters, Mike Coulter's uh, Luke Cage, they were all just so fucking spot on. Yeah. So, but especially the Punisher. Man, the, those scenes between Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin and Bernthal's Punisher, so that good. prison scene, so holy good. shit, that prison scene. Fucking intense, Oh my God, man. man it just... I don't even know. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. Bring it back, Marvel. Bring it back. Do it. Proven Innocent is number three for me. Proven Innocent. Uh, Again, another show that probably if it had debuted now might still be on. Yeah. Okay, this was a show about wrongfully convicted people, um, you know, and then the one girl gets out and proves she's become a lawyer and then she gets out and she starts this whole firm of – Defending people who were wrongfully convicted. But yeah. it was a lot of um, social justice and inequality and how um, minorities spend more time in jail than, than and convicted at a higher rate. And just a lot of relevant stuff that's going on now. It was from Adam Armis and Danny Strong, mm. our buddy Danny Strong. Of course. Um, and uh, just Kelsey Grammer, uh, Catherine Lodestein, uh, just uh, like uh, – Oh, so many. Rachel LaFerve and Nikki James, one of my favorites, Nikki James. I love yes. her. And she would narrate everything. It was told from a podcast point of view, narrated by Nikki James, mm. which I just thought was brilliant. Um, One season. Yeah. Kelsey Grammer was so <sighs> fucking good on that show. Yeah. I love Kelsey Grammer, man. Yeah. I just, uh, but anyway, one season. Yeah. Uh, Adam Armas and Danny Strong need to do another one. It's so sad. It's so sad. And another one that makes me so freaking sad because of budget issues and, I mean, Netflix doing it's Netflix thing, The Get Down. I mean, you got Mm. Justice Smith. You got freaking the dude who voiced Miles Morales in Into the Spider Universe. Yes. Like, you got... So many great actors. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. I mean, so many good actors. And you can kind of tell that there was budget problems in the second season when they went kind of animated for part of it. Yeah. And I mean, it was just so good. Like, it, it's about the invention of hip-hop and being a DJ and how the, all that correlates and how it's all, like, in one exactly. family. And, like, it was just such a good show. Such and what I liked show. is that they did a really good job of it was fictional, but then all, they included real life people in it. Exactly. Like, you know, like, like, I mean, just Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, just like, uh, they did a brilliant job of merging the, the, the fiction with the reality. Exactly. Um, Jimmy Smits. Yeah. Like, there was, like you said, so many brilliant cast members on the show. And it was Baz Luhrmann. Yeah. Baz Luhrmann just couldn't get it under control exactly. with the budget, man. He's what killed that show. And I, that's unfortunate. I, th- I wish they would have just fired him and brought in another showrunner and kept it going because i I mean he but he just could not get the shit done under budget and yeah that sucks man it does suck it does suck and shameek moore 
Shamik Moore. There yeah. you go. <laughs> it's Shamik Moore. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant uh, actor. We'll yeah. be back, apparently, for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. That's good. That's good. Um, another one, and we, oh man, we were all so disappointed about this one. We were huge fans of it. Lauren Cohen and Scott Foley yeah. and Verdas and just the whole gang. So good. Whiskey Cavalier. Yeah. Another victim of budget. Yeah. Like, it was just too expensive to, yeah. to shoot. Um, brilliant, brilliant show so about, you know, cross spies and the CIA and espionage, and, espionage <laughs> and it was just, it was funny, it was action filled, it was dramatic, and I mean, come on, Scott Foley and Lauren Cohn were brilliant together, were. just brilliant together. <sighs> that one tried to save campaign and Disney and ABC rethought about it, said, okay, it's not canceled, and then said it was canceled again. Bastards. Like, yeah, what the fuck? NBC, don't be doing. All right, I I'm know. just saying. Exactly. Exactly. And what? Number one. And number one, Council of Dads. Yes. I mean, if you couldn't tell from the fucking industry news, we brought it up millions of times. Council of Dads is the most relevant show on television right now, or at least it is. was on television. Hopefully it gets picked up by a streamer, but literally, like we've talked about before, you're dealing with a black gay couple. You're dealing with adoption. You're dealing with transgender. You're dealing with like so many of these things that are relevant Under, in every deli- day life. Underprivileged neighborhoods yes um you know i just uh, the question of paternity and how that can fuck up your life um cancer cancer the loss of a spouse how do you carry on when's too soon to start a new relationship exactly or or just all of these things the diversity the inclusivity just everything about this show screamed what's going on right now exactly the cast is absolutely brilliant Michael O'Neill and Sarah Wayne Callis and J. August Richards and Clive Standen and L. Weaver and MJ Anthony. All just of like them. all of them all are just them. brilliant. And then w- Tony and Joan, the writing was just absolutely amazing. Please, I, okay, here's our here's our here's our deal. Okay, we're gonna implore you, please. Jennifer Sulky, Reed Hastings, Ted Sarandos, anybody at Bob Iger, anybody at Disney. Y'all, watch these shows. Watch yeah. these eight episodes and then find it. Find it and know that you can save it. It's the right thing to do, guys. Exactly. It is the right thing to do. This show deserves to be on television. You guys can make that happen. You can. Okay? So one of y'all have the guts, have the courage to pick this show up because it needs to be on the air. It's so good. It's so good. It's literally, literally the next this is us. Yeah. It, I mean, it just, it, it just, I don't know, man. I, I, I can't even, there's no words to describe, like, the connection that you feel with this show. Yeah. Because you can, you can relate to every character on that show. You are one of those characters. Yeah. Or you have been through something that they have been through, or you know somebody yeah. that's been, I mean, it's so connectable. And so, like, the message of hope and positivity and love and coming together and just everything about this show how how NBC decided to do what they did and cancel it is beyond me. You know, don't don't get on there with your Black Lives Matters and inclusivity and diversity and all this matters, and then you fucking cancel the show. Because yeah. I say you're full of shit with your whole banner out there. If you cancel this show, you must not stand by it. That's all I'm saying. Just saying. Because like, this show stood by everything you claim you stand for, and you canceled it. Exactly. So, I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. But, yeah, what is your top five <laughs> shows that you think shouldn't have been canceled? We want to know. Please be sure to comment in the description, in the thread, any post that we posted on. Be sure to comment. We really want to know. We appreciate all the fan interaction. We, we love do. all you guys. We do. We love you guys. And if you agree with us... About Council of Dads, use hashtag Save Council of Dads. That's right. That's it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Anyway, great top five segment. <laughs> it was. Great freaking was. top five segment. Uh, now, <laughs> now it is time for the box office recap. A little reworking a little bit. Um, some jumped ahead. Some fell behind. Mm. Uh, Becky, which was, I believe, either number two or number three last week. Not Aunt Becky. Uh, <laughs> I can never hear the name again without laughing and or getting mad. I know. Fuck you, Aunt Becky. I know. <laughs> just, all right. All uh, right. But it, this one jumped to number one. Woo! 
Ooh. with uh, eighty three thousand. Followed is at number two. With oh come on! 000. I was so hoping you'd do it. Yeah. It was followed by. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the wretched, which was number four last week, jumped back to number three whoop, whoop. with uh, forty thousand. Our buddy Jameson Jones is in yes. there. Be sure to check that out and listen to his interview on Inside the Crazy Inform. And uh, Infamous went to. Uh, Fourth place with thirty seven thousand and Star Dog and Turbo Cat at twenty three thousand. Sure, sure, sure. These numbers just crack me up. Eighty three thousand for Becky. That's normally like what a film nowadays at the box office would make in like five hours. I know. Like I mean, not a whole you know week. I'm interested to see what's the first film that is going to break a million dollars again. Yeah, like, yeah. Over like like in a, a day yeah. or a weekend because I mean I don't even. That's know. what I'm saying. Like, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely bonkers, guys. Absolutely bonkers. But now it is time for the top pro, our top IMDb pro uh, <laughs> trending segment. Mm. Man, you guys know we love this app. It's our bible. We live by it. We died by Literally, it. Literally, every time we were looking up names just now, that's what we were doing. Literally. On IMDb. Yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's where you go. Agreed. Agreed. I was trying to do that for The Crown, for George, but there's too many fucking people that cast in that I, show. It, it's, it's true. But I tried. It's true. I tried. I just couldn't get no, there. No, no. But it's all good. It's all good. We that's, will give him a shout out on social media for the guy who plays, you know, young Charles because yeah, he's brilliant. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, this week, nothing changed from last week. It's still bondage, dark it's shit. It's all about sex, baby. And, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Ana de Armas. Like, yeah. it's still the same. Like, uh, <laughs> she, she, somebody help her get off of the back of Ben's bike. Seriously. Please, somebody just like intervene there. Okay. I, I, yeah. No words. I'm not going to watch this film i'm not gonna watch Mm-mm. 365 days i i don't know what dark's about i should probably at least watch the trailer for that one mm. and Ana de Armas, go you <laughs> <laughs> I, no words go but you i like go you you know you know you, it, it, yeah you're doing something right it, you are you, you know what i would suggest in instead of watching 365 and i'm not trying to knock netflix because you could save council of dad's netflix t- ted. reading ted yeah. um but uh, it, watch doom patrol yeah uh, season two, episode four. Yeah, it's out there. The Sex Men. It's out there. Sex Ghosts. Yeah. I- I'm not even making it up. If you, if this is your thing, watch. <laughs> yeah. I-, I would highly suggest not drinking or using any form of um, intoxicant before watching the it. The show will do that for you. You won't need it. Yeah, yeah. It, the show will do it for you. Like <laughs> just I, that's all I'm saying. Just my little piece of uh, just passing along oh, for you God. guys. It's a brilliant show. Yeah, I'm just saying. it's absolutely wild <laughs> but anyway guys <laughs> thank you so much for getting a little crazy with us on episode 119 of inside Whoa! the crazy ant farm we gotta thank our guests again one more time emily peachy yes. for coming on the show we appreciate her every single time and everything she does for us it's true be sure to follow her on social media be sure to follow us on social media at crazy ant media are all post are all on social media platforms <laughs> um, i'm sure everybody has seen shelby's amazing work this past yes! week these past yes. three days she's been amazing we appreciate you shelby uh be sure to follow her crazy aunt intern she rocks at everything she's doing right now um honestly over the past three days we have seen an increase by 11 followers on instagram because i believe because of her yeah in just three days she's, yeah. she's rocking and rolling three or four new followers uh a day and she, she's killing it. if you guys didn't know all social media from crazy aunt media has been shelby it has it has been it, and she's been doing best hire ever yeah we're uh, super thankful for her like she is amazing and i mean she should be the new batgirl Uh, (laughs) but like i said be sure to follow her on social media at crazy and intern she's on uh instagram and twitter as well be sure to follow our personal accounts as well jlo fantastic across all social media platforms and crazy and guy 1970 that's right that's right be sure to subscribe to this podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast anchor apple podcast spotify google play music our hair radio many more podbean stitcher all those good places and be sure to watch us on youtube yes hit that subscribe button 
ring that bell over there and just do all those amazing things yes. and support the cause, man. Come get a little crazy. Be an honorary Crazy Ant member. We love you. It's we, true. We really do. It's true. And then buy an honorary Crazy Ant shirt. That's right. It'll be br- <laughs> at crazyantmedia.com. That's right. I mean, it's all right there, guys. It's all uh, right there. I'm guessing that since this is the part where we talk about our favorite part of the show or whatever, yeah. you, you continuously waving Batman. Is Was that one of your favorites? That was pretty badass. I like what they're going to do with that role. I mean, it's really Batman Beyond. I was... Yeah. I've literally been talking if about this forever. All, if it lasts all 10 years and Michael Keaton's damn near 80, it sure the fuck will be Batman know. Beyond. Like, know. You know. But yeah, Batman and honestly the Amazon thing with uh, inclusivity. Yes. So. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Yeah. And um, that's my favorite part too. I, I just, I, of course, always love talking about the comic book stuff. So that got me excited. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, if I'm going to be honest, I think the top five part because yeah. just we really are – you know, we pride ourselves on the whole diversity and inclusivity and, sure. and, and, and doing the doing the right thing. And I just feel like that the whole Council of Dads thing really gets us up because that's what it's all about. Yeah. And and so somebody, you know, please save that show and definitely it was my one of my favorite parts. Agreed, agreed. And I mean it's just like you said, it's an amazing show. It's it honestly I was thinking about saying it earlier, but I think it's a proven fact that it is honestly more relevant than this is us right now it is so. uh, i wholeheartedly agree and speaking of inclusivity and diversity and you know who should pick it up maybe own can pick it up exactly holy shit you know who can pick it up oh yeah oprah didn't even think